thing. We will have a look at the water distribution systems today. Finally, whatever is said and done, the end thing is water distribution. We need to have the water, treated water reach the houses. Again, it's all known things. Please try to just put yourself a little, apply yourself. Here I am just facilitating you to think. Okay. So, water distribution, what happens in your city? Have you thought of the water network in your city? Okay. See, when we had we had a major water crisis when we were in Tutigrand. So, that time what we did is, instead of sending the, the, I think there was a pipe breakage or something. So, what we had to do, we had to go straight to the reservoir and then take. Reservoir in this case is the big overhead tanks which you have. So, usually what are the types of tanks which you see, they will either be circular or they will be the rectangular tanks or they have the inch-type tank. And uh, if you look at many of the photographs of the American water systems, they have some nice profiles. They have some nice profiles. So basically, the water tank should uh, ensure that it is kept clean and safe. And you cannot close all the openings. So you will have to ensure that uh, there is some proper mesh or something where insects or birds, birds especially, cannot go in and probably even fall into the water. I am going to start with this short video. In fact, that is why I came with the speakers. Okay, and let me just increase the volume also, just in case it is low. Yeah, it's all fine. So this is a video of a water distribution system, and uh, all the principles which are there are still there in India. Just that nobody has documented it, but I'm sure you'll get a very good idea of all the things. And again, I'll be asking questions. Again. Once ready, the water moves from the treatment plant to our homes, but the story doesn't end there. Drinking water is carried through large pipes into the water main system for distribution. Water service mains and service lines are buried at least four feet underground to prevent the water from freezing. Once water is in the water mains, it is delivered to all parts of the service area through underground pipes. Service areas include businesses, industries, commercial and residential customers within the city of Dayton and to many customers in the surrounding suburbs. Distribution mains are under every street making drinking water available to all. Water flow is controlled throughout the system with water main line valves. These valves allow water to be shut off from the rest of the system when an emergency situation arises. Water moves from the water mains into water service lines. The city installs a water tap that connects the water service line from the water main to the property line where a curb stop is installed. A licensed plumber then installs the water service from the curb stop into the house or building. The city is responsible for the installation and maintenance of the water distribution system and water services to the curb stop. Water customers receive water through the service lines into their homes through their own internal plumbing systems. A home's internal plumbing is connected to the service line at the curb stop. The homeowner is responsible for maintaining the water service line from the curb stop into the home. Water flows from the curb stop through the water meter of the home or business. A typical meter for a home is located outside or in the basement. The meter allows water department employees to read the exact amount of water used. This official reading must occur once every 12 months. Fire hydrants are also a part of the distribution system. Fire hydrants are connected to the water mains to allow for fire protection throughout the city. The water department is responsible for maintenance, operation, and the upgrade of the distribution system, including water meters. The homeowner is responsible for repairs to the portion of the service line in the yard and all internal plumbing. All plumbing must meet the city's plumbing code, such as replacing lead pipes with copper ones. Water distribution is working to ensure the system is delivering high quality drinking water to our customers. Crews work day and night in all types of weather, maintaining the system by repairing water service line leaks and main breaks, repairing fire hydrants, and installing and changing water meters. Random breaks in water mains occur due to age or cold weather. An interruption in water service may occur when crews are repairing service leaks or main breaks. Crews work around the clock to bring affected service areas online as soon as possible. 
Occasionally, after major water line repairs have been completed, customers in the shutdown area are given a boil advisory as a precaution. Customers are notified by flyers placed on front doors. Once lab tests show that the water is safe for consumption again, all clear notifications are given in the same way. Sometimes a main break may cause temporary discoloration in the water. The homeowner should allow the water to run until the discoloration disappears. During the time the water is discolored, doing laundry should be avoided. Water distribution relies on customers to help monitor the system for leaks and breaks. If you see water bubbling up in the middle of the street or in a yard, please report this situation immediately to the water department at 333-4905. Dispatch personnel also can be contacted to report water meter problems, water pressure problems, and when emergency water shutoff is necessary due to broken pipes. Could you follow the language or was it uh, difficult? Little bit, the accent was a little different from ours. So basically when you see, they had the water lines, the drinking water lines marked in blue. There were other pipes, sewer lines. If you note, sewer lines are below the water lines. Reason is, if there is a breakage of a sewer system, it should not come in contact with the drinking water system. And again, the lower the sewer is, the better will be the head. Like, you know, if, if you are having a basement also in the house, the chances of ensuring it goes out is very good. In, uh, I was working in a college in Daraipakam quite long ago, about 8 or 9 years ago almost. So there, the final treatment plant was at a much higher level than the than some parts of the campus. So what did they do? They had a small tank where they collected the sewer sewage uh, locally, and they had a submersible pump, which uh, which was also called a, it's a sewage pump, which was used to pump it to the other side. So you see that sort of a problem can mostly be avoided. And coming back here. On this video, you will see that uh, they, they have got metering systems, which normally is not uh, very effective in Indian, the Indian context. However, the amount of water which they are able to supply uh, at a reliable, as a reliable uh, source is because people are paying for the water. And one more thing, in any private system, for instance, Reliance is operating in uh, Bombay for electricity. There, power supply is 24 7 guaranteed rain or shine. Do you know the reason? Because, huh? Because of privatization. Because only if a person is consuming something, you are going to be getting paid. Okay? So, when you are uh, probably from the government side, it's not so efficient because of so many things, there is no incentive to continue giving them water or anything, there is no, no incentive. But if, if your uh, boss in Reliance sees that his unit is making loss, he has to answer quite a lot of people. So he is very worried. So if suppose, suppose we are able to actually bring in that sort of uh, efficiency with a social outlook. Because I know whatever said and done, any private player at one point of time he will have to look at profits. Because the, he dis depends on his shareholders. Shareholders want only profit. So, if suppose shareholders are not preferring him, he is in trouble. Okay. So, this is something which we can think about. So, how are we going to make our water system more efficient? See, even that they are breaking the road and everything. Even here we are doing the same thing. We are not doing anything uh, different. But what the problem is we are doing things differently. Okay. So, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is also something which we should think about and if you look at uh, it as a civil engineer your your specialization is such that you not only can look at the plumbing system also how the road can be made nice and how every way the people can get touched is in your hand or in our hands i can't say in your hands in our hands okay and uh, one more thing was there they told that whenever there is a breakage in the water they intimate people with flyers what's a flyer is the pamphlet or whatever they give so, uh, my father had a brief uh, stint in uh, Oman. So, there electricity was assured. If they are going to cut current, 
or if they are going to cut water also. Even there the water was centralized and uh, they will have to intimate you with a flyer, two times or three times they will do that and say on this day between this and this time. It's not like an indefinite. In uh, the, when the recent rains came, you go and ask the railways, they say train is there sir. When is it there? We don't know. But train is there. When will it come? We don't know. When it comes, it will come. Very nice answer. <laughs> okay. So, that sort of a thing cannot happen in these places. And uh, yeah, so this is, these are some of the things. And also when they get the water clear, they also have to intimate. Okay. So, these are some of the things which we can learn from these people. Also, they test the water before they yes. open the yes. 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 Yeah. And other thing, hydrants, I spoke about. You know what those hydrants are? In Chennai it was there, but now they have removed everything. See, these are all very good things with foresight that people did. In uh, Fire never breaks out. Fire very rarely breaks out. But when it breaks out, it breaks out with a vengeance. Like, uh, I don't know how many of you heard T Nagar in Chennai? Okay. That there was a very big establishment very popular commercial establishment, it caught fire. Okay, quite a two or three people lost their lives. But that was in such a crowded and congested place, fire engines could not hold. Okay, so these, and you can imagine two or three lorries have to come, you can't. In addition to this Sun TV, Jaya TV, every TV wants to come and take the exclusive so what shots. Is the department Sorry? What is the department shop or It was a departmental shop, as in it had everything. They also have uh, clothes, but this one was not a clothing department. Uh, okay. We saw these things in the water supply initial stages, like you know, when I when we were looking at what the Tamil Nadu government says about the various ways by which we ascertain the water, when we look at the design period, watershed runoff also is one of the things. What is watershed? The area from which water reaches a water source or what feeds a water source. So, these are some of the things which for a water distribution network also, like you need to know what is the source for this distribution system. So, these are some of the things which we do and we based on this we uh, design the reservoir. How big should the reservoir be? It should store sufficient uh, water for the demand. Okay, For instance, in one of the uh, videos which we saw earlier, the lakes brought in, uh, from the lake water was there for about three months of water supply I think, right? So they have, they plan in such a way that you have sufficient or even more than sufficient water supply, okay? So here, it, and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't want to quote these uh, uh, science thrillers, okay, we will not use that because we don't know how much of it is true. So I am not going for that. Here we go, storage for demand. So what are the demands that we have? We have the peak demand. What is this peak demand? You yourself will see in your hostels, between what time to what time will the uh, bathrooms be? 78, 78 maximum uh, usage and uh, I, I don't know, when we were all in the hostel, people never uh, used to bother closing the tap. So, tap will be open really like you know, full and people will just be using water like anything. But that also happens everywhere in the house. So, morning time and probably sometime in the evening, you will have more demand than other times. So, it should meet the peak demand. Then there is this fire requirement which we didn't calculate at all, but uh, most of the developed countries will specifically require that this amount of water is always available. So, then there is land use. Okay. Uh, so, what happens is sometimes you will uh, use it for your gardens and all this, washing, cleaning and all this and topography by topography what we do is, we suppose you are going to have too many undulations and all, we need to have our reservoir placed in such a manner that it will be able to take the water without much additional pumping. Okay, you should ensure that your reservoir is able to meet the extreme periphery of the areas which it is designed to serve. Then we have industrial needs. So many industries come and go, okay, sometimes, see one of the things is this uh, garages car wash places. So they require also quite a lot of water. Nowadays they have, uh, they mix compressed air and then they have even almost dry uh, ways of cleaning the car. Very little water is used. In one of the malls in Chennai, in the basement, they have this place to clean your car. It is quite expensive to do it. But uh, I think it is in Phoenix. 
uh, oh Phoenix is uh, this one. They uh, say Phoenix or I don't know. This one in uh, White's Road. One of those two malls. White's Road. Uh, that's my favorite mall. I'm forgetting the name. E <laughs> ah, Express Avenue. Correct. You're right. E A. E. I think it is E A. So. That's actually one very good thing in Chennai. You have a place to go and spend time. Because you waste a lot, spend a lot of money, waste a lot of money also, but it's good. And uh, if you look at all these places, you know, EA and uh, even if you look at our, um, in our main building, they've got that small vehicle, you know, which cleans the place, sweeps, swabs, everything, with water and all. So all those actually are very efficient in the use of water. But uh, the thing is, it all happens only when you increase the price of water. When you make water a rare commodity, it is becoming attractive to buy something which will save water. Till then, people are not bothered about <laughs> saving water. So it is a double-edged sword actually, whatever I am talking. I want it to be cheap, I want it to be accessible and reliable. Okay, then pressure needs again, this is uh, related to, the, there should be sufficient pressure at the last point also. Then capacity of distribution system and emergency requirement is for the basically it is only for your uh, fire and other emergency is in something like Chennai floods where electricity is failing you still need to have some safe water okay so these are some of the things which I actually think that can come up and of course cost of distribution what would be the principal cost in distribution if you are going to have very small pipes automatically your cost is going to be lesser but your uh, carrying capacity is also that much lesser so probably you will be spending more money laying another pipe but initial stage what is your fund with that only you can work then there is also the type of pumping which you use suppose you are getting diesel very cheaply you might prefer to just run the entire system with diesel or electricity if it is required or what you do comes into the cost of construction so here I got my second assignment uh, which I already put up on the Moodle site. So yeah, so pumps and I am giving you till 14th of December, I am sure that it is more than enough. And uh, when I say digital assignment, don't blindly copy paste, try to do a little, show a little uniqueness. Okay, in fact for these assignments you can take photos and all that and also put it in your assignment. How you do it is, you have, it's a little painful, you will have to save the file and then you have to include it in the place where you want it to appear. But uh, I am not, uh, I am deliberately not keeping it as a place where you can upload the file for my own reasons. And uh, earlier when we were uh, having this digital things coming up, one of the main objection to such things was that we, we don't know how to type, we don't know how to type fast, but you have to learn it, okay. And uh, now, in fact, all the students are so good with these touch devices. My son is very good in touch devices. <laughs> and uh, my father, uh, father's cell phone got damaged. Here, I mean, not damaged, I didn't like it. So, the Blackberry with buttons, I thought would be good for that generation people. But he is saying touch is good. And now what is happening is, touch is going to the next level. You will be taking your drawings on a tablet to sight. Instead of taking, it is happening, companies have started to do that. One, it's a digital initiative, the t main thing is you can't tell I took the wrong drawing to site. Even if you have the wrong drawing, you can always immediately get it through your uh, 3G network or anything. It is, it, is, it is actually happening, that's the way things have started to change. So, please get a little familiar with the use of these technologies. It will be painful but you can't help it. So I got another uh, sh short, uh, I mean these are uh, appurtenances, what is appurtenances, these are the fixtures on the pipe, okay. So pipes, valves, valves are not only for closing the system, we have air release valves, we have, that is suppose you, uh, water is not there for some time in the pipe, air gets trapped. What would happen is this will cause a bubble which will not let water flow, it's an incompressible thing, it gets stuck, it's not able to move. If such a thing happens, your water network is going to suffer. So here they have air release valves, they will also have vacuum release valves, okay. So all these are also valves in our release. and then one way valves will be there so that water doesn't go back into the system. So then we have pressure reducing systems, then uh, backflow prevention systems. 
because the near the reservoir the pressure has to be much higher so that the water reaches the last person so you may have to have some water reducing uh, pressure reducing devices pumps this is what you are going to do please look into that plot manual okay the uh, terminal water and drainage what is terminal water and drainage so that manual has the thing and in fact i only want you to go through that one in particular because it's very comprehensive it will give you a good idea of what was required and this is what is going to happen in india metering devices and fire hydrants of course so these are the appurtenances so apart from this i don't know whether i want to talk much more about water distribution systems okay i got a short video which i found interesting uh, i think it's around 13 minutes but it's a history of water distribution so just to widen our horizons and thinking water it's an underrated convenience of the western world that one can turn on a tap and receive clean pure water at an adequate pressure drinking cleaning washing cooking water use is a critical part of our daily life and comes delivered through an expansive distribution system throughout much of human history however this convenience has not always been available it took a large number of incremental advances in science and technology to engineer water distribution systems to be as reliable and inexpensive as they are today i've always been interested in water distribution systems Coming from a farm in the southwest of Australia, our family had to collect and store our own water for personal use as well as irrigation. This short presentation aims to provide a brief engineering history of water distribution systems, an overview of the current circumstances of distribution systems and the directions for the future, whilst providing this in a West Australian context. One of the first engineering problems humans faced was the supply of water for domestic use and the irrigation of crops. Urban lifestyles can only be retained with abundant water, as is clear from every successful civilization in history which has invested in the construction and maintenance of water distribution systems. The earliest recognised contribution in fluid mechanics theory was made by Greek mathematician Archimedes. He formulated and applied the buoyancy principle to determine the gold content of the crown of King Hiero. The Romans, perhaps the most well-known contributors to early engineering of water distribution systems, they built great aqueducts, bringing water and healthy lifestyle into the biggest cities of the times. Key components to well-designed aqueducts include the use of the correct gradient, not too steep, not too shallow. A good steady gradient of between 1 over 50 and 1 over 1000, depending on the distance the water had to travel, was used to promote constant and laminar flow. The aqueducts crossed valleys on their way to Rome. At certain heights the Romans used the ancient art of arches to raise these structures, but often they used siphons to transport water. Inverted siphons had a header tank on one end of the span and a receiving tank at a lower height. The water would thus siphon through due to the pressure difference. This method was favoured since it kept water clean and safe from potential enemies. The development of water distribution systems was somewhat stifled during the Middle Ages, but began moving forward again during the Renaissance period. In the 13th century, a 5.5 km lead pipeline was installed in the United Kingdom to convey water into London. By the mid 1700s, London had more than 50 kilometres of water mains that had been constructed out of a mixture of wood, cast iron and lead pipelines. During the 1800s, cast iron pipe gradually replaced wooden pipe. In the early 1700s, Henry de Pitot showed that the velocity of a fluid is proportional to the square root of the head. Investigators realised that it took energy to move fluids but Antoine Chazy was the first to extend this idea to show that head loss in a fluid is proportional to the velocity squared. All subsequent head loss equations in turbulent flow are related to his work. By 1840, an analytical equation for predicting head loss in laminar flow was developed. This work 
and Chessy's equation were extended to a more general formula by Julius Weisbach and Henry Darcy in 1845. Osborne Reynolds in 1883 investigated the different flow regimes and was able to clearly define the difference between laminar and turbulent flow. He also identified the dimensionless number, which is used to characterise the different types of flow. Although the Darcy Weisbach equation could be used to determine head loss in pipes, determining the friction factor proved difficult. Ludwig Prandtl and his associates von Kármán, Nikrodazi, Blasius and Stanton determined that it was the nature of the boundary layer between the fluid and solid phases that determines the drag, also known as the head loss. Nikrodazi developed the famous experiments in which uniform sand grains were glued to the inside of pipes and head loss was then measured for various velocities. These relationships were later summarised in diagrams by Stanton, Hunter Rouse and later Lewis Moody, showing the relationship between Reynolds number, pipe roughness and friction factor, which famously became known as the Moody chart. Now let's turn our attention to a West Australian context. In the late 19th century, Perth was a small colony situated on the Swan River. Its water supply was essentially taken care of. However, as gold mining exploded in Coolgardie, limited water supply in Western Australia's hot interior threatened to separate the gold fields from the Perth colony. Premier John Forrest employed Irish-born Australian C.Y. O'Connor to manage and implement a plan that would engineer WA's baptism of fire and lead eventually to Federation. I went to Mundaring Weir in the Helena Valley east of Perth to see where C.Y. O'Connor's dream of the Coolgardie pipeline truly began. O'Connor devised the ingenious yet controversial scheme to transport water from a dam outside of Perth in the Darling Ranges to almost 560 kilometres eastwards to the desert goldfields and Coolgardie. The water scheme comprised of eight pipelines joined together by a series of adjoining pumping stations to push the water uphill all the way to the goldfields. His grand design was ambitious and expensive and led to a deluge of criticism from those who opposed the design and the government. At that time, no other water pipeline of this scale had ever been built before. Here at Mundaring we are at pump station number one. The water is initially pumped up over the ranges. Losing pressure, a second pump station is needed. Third and a fourth, covering the water, covering the distance across between the ranges and Coolgardie. Finally, here we go, pump station number seven. Pumps water over the to Coolgardie, where it fills the reservoir at Mount Charlotte. We're now in the Helena Valley, in the basin beneath Mundaring Weir. The dam itself has been extended in height within the last century but this is where it all began. Now let's turn our attention to pumping station number one and how it worked. Notice the very tall tower on pump station number one. This is the exhaust for the furnaces that burn inside that heat the water. The height of the tower creates a greater pressure difference and sucks in more oxygen per unit time which leads to a greater reaction temperature and hence greater energy being imparted upon the water and a greater heat and greater steam generated. Furnaces drove steam into three steam powered engines within the pumping station which were of a revolutionary design for their time. They had two high pressure cylinders each of 40 centimetres diameter, two intermediate pressure cylinders of 64 centimetres diameter and then two low pressure cylinders of 117 centimetres diameter which had a vacuum pump on the other side of the piston in order to generate a maximum capacity of 12.7 thousand cubic metres of water a day. The revolutionary pumping system employed by O'Connor was just one of the calculated risks he took during the project. 
He also used a new locking bar pipe system. He used thinner steel which caused less friction and resulted in fewer leaks than existing riveted steel pipes. These risks combined with the perceived overall foolhardiness of the project put enormous stress on O'Connor who on the 10th of March in 1902 took his own life shooting himself on a beach south of Fremantle. O'Connor's project commissioned in 1896 was completed one year after his death in 1903 leaves an inspiring legacy in Western Australia's history. Solving for flows and pressures in water distribution systems involves solving thousands of simultaneous nonlinear equations. Therefore, design of more efficient systems has increased in parallel with computer power and relevant modelling systems. Nevertheless, engineers throughout the early 20th century were able to design and analyse the hydraulics of functioning systems using a combination of simplifications and conservatism. Freeman developed a graphical method for solving problems with parallel pipes in the late 1800s. Hardy Cross developed a systematic tabular process for calculating system hydraulics but involved extensive use of a slide rule. Digital computers were first used to solve network problems in the early 1950s. Early hydraulic analysis methods were based on computerizing the Hardy Cross method, whereas later methods took advantage of the computer's ability to solve matrix problems. These models were later extended to handle more complex hydraulics and included pumps, control valves, as well as extended period analysis. Water quality modeling was introduced in the 1980s. Recent advances in hydraulic analysis have focused on the integration of modelling as well as geospatial data sources. This has made it less difficult for modellers to create extremely precise, detailed models with a minimum manual labour. Until recently, reading water meters has been a tedious task for utilities. Improvements in automated reading technology are making it much more cost effective. Water distribution system mapping has evolved from pen and paper to digital drawings on computer assisted design and geospatial information systems. Use of these systems enables utilities to combine the functionality of mapping and database systems. Furthermore, the growth of the internet has made the sharing of water distribution system information much easier between utilities as well as suppliers and regulators. It appears inevitable that as we move forward into the future, as populations around the world grow and climate changes, that the management of water distribution systems is only going to become more important. Future trends for water distribution systems, as identified within the literature, include a better understanding of water quality transformations in pipes, a greater emphasis on energy efficiency, as energy prices continue to rise, incorporation of water security considerations into all design and operating decisions, asset management will become more widely incorporated into decision making. This is going to require better sharing information. There will be a wider use of automated meter reading and there will be a greater emphasis on rehabilitation and maintenance of existing water distribution infrastructure as opposed to new construction. Thank you for listening to my presentation on water distribution systems. Remember that we can all have an effect into the future by being water wise. Thank you and goodbye. So, what did you think of this presentation? They brought in a lot of your fluid mechanics, right? So, all these are also part of your design. These were some of the design principles. And uh, if you look at the determination which they had, that I, I'm not able to get a, I forgot the name of the gentleman who designed that system. It was commissioned after his death. Actually, the system was, actually came after his death. And everybody thought it was not good. 
but he had the uh, perseverance to go ahead with it and finish it and um, basically all your engineering problems are like that okay all your engineering problems are there like that and uh, probably it starts even in your college days which you might find difficult but when you go out and if you're really doing work you really doing engineering it is as challenging as what they spoke about here but you have seen it's surmountable sometimes that's the way it works so anyway wish you all a very successful career and i hope this is a motivation for you guys